you know, of course that process has evolved. When I started the practice with zero patients, up until now doing this over a decade, that the process has evolved as our patient base has become more educated and our referral base has become more educated. So when I first started, um, I really kind of held on to the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And so I couldn't expect patients to come in seeking answers for things that they didn't recognize were issues. So we did a lot of um, education and a lot of presentation of some of the issues that I see and asking the patients for their permission if they want solutions for that. And when I first started, I didn't have any technology. I couldn't afford anything, let's be honest. So I didn't have a scanner. I didn't have a 3D CBCT. So a lot of that came through photos that I had generated and just sitting down and listening to the patient and then answering, um, answering that way. Now, as I was able to grow in some of the technology, now we take an iTero scan, called a dental health scan. Every single new patient gets a dental health scan, and by the way, it's complimentary. It's not complimentary because I'm generous, I'm manipulative. You're gonna get this scan because you don't know what it's about to show you, and I'm gonna use this as a tool to educate you. Yeah, maybe I'm generous too, but probably more manipulative because I wanna show you because you don't know what you don't know. And when we look at the teeth and I say, what can I help you, what's your main concern? Um, it's amazing what patients will say. They'll have a loose, broken tooth, and they're like, I want whitening. Okay, well, we can talk about that in a bit. Like, well, let's get there. So when they look at the screen, it's not my opinion. It's not a little mirror. It's not even the digital photos, which I used for a long time. I take a photo on my, on my phone and throw it up on the screen in front. Hey, do you see how this tooth is cracked or see the wear pattern? The digital scanner is even better than that. They can manipulate it with their finger. So we take the digital scan, the assistant steps out, and we leave it there. And every patient, without fail, touches it with their finger and they look at it. Well, why is that? Why is that abfraction there? Which they don't say abfraction, obviously. Why is the tooth broken there? Why is this tooth completely flat? They start introducing issues that they see. And I'll say, well, that's flat there. It's supposed to be pointed, but because you grind your teeth so bad. I don't know that, I didn't know that I grind my teeth. Do you ever wake up sore? Do you have filler in your cheekbones? No, I don't have any filler. You have beautiful muscle development. And then I go into the bicep analogy. You're working those muscles all night. Well, thank you. So I just told them they're pretty, but you're pathologically pretty. You're pretty because you're working those muscles all night. So really ways that we can introduce that to patients. As, as the practice has grown, then I was able to invest in a 3D CBCT so I could show them the sagittal view of their airway that is completely underdeveloped. Patients will look at it before I say anything. We put it on the screen in front of them. <gasps> How do I breathe? I'm like, I actually don't know. I was gonna ask you the same question. How do you breathe? Here is a more normal image. And then we'd have an image of a, a nice big airway. We have those around the office so patients begin to ask questions. No one wants to be told what they need to do. No one needs to be told what their problem is. Ask my husband. He does not want to be told what his problem is and I could tell him. What's easier is if patients ask you for solutions uh, for problems as they see it. If you can be the solution provider, that forms a much better uh, relationship than, than someone who's trying to solve problems or sell dentistry or, oh, you just want all my money. No, I actually don't want any of your money. You know, I plenty of, we're, pl there's plenty of fillings, there's plenty of dentistry to go on. I actually just wanna help you. And some patients are not open for that help and that's no problem. At some point, they'll hear it and when they're ready, we're here to help them. And if they choose not to do anything, that's fine for them as well. Doesn't happen often, they usually circle back. As the practice has evolved, now we actually have patients that call and ask, um, we train our front office, um, our team to ask them, how would you like the doctor to help you? So before they come in, I have some idea of what they want. And we actually had a patient more than once, but recently this week they said, yeah, I think I have a coffee straw and I need a garden hose. So I want her to help me. And so they write down verbatim. So when they come in, the first thing we do is take that CBCT. Yep, you're right, you have a coffee straw. I mean, what does that even mean? Like they don't teach you that in dental school, but that's the, that's the information that was disseminated to them through a referral. We addressed it immediately. Um, they, they threw money at us trying to get this tap appliance to, to create a garden garden hose of an airway. So it the practice really evolves based on how much you educate your patients. So no matter what it looks like, I told you we get a, you know, a, a, what I would consider a large number of new patients, but every new patient has the opportunity to communicate what their needs are and an opportunity to educate. When I first started, all of that came from me. I did all the education. As I've grown my team, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to invest in the team so that they can also have those similar conversations so it's just not coming from you. Um, you know, we had a new team member start and, and someone said that, I want a coffee straw instead of garden hose. And we hadn't trained her up yet. Her response is, 
do you know who you're calling? Like this is this essential dentist, you know, we don't have, we don't sell those here. So it, you know, it's very funny, but also it was an opportunity for us to realize you're not allowed to answer the phone until you know the difference between a coffee straw and a garden hose because we're not losing that new patient. It's not that because the new patient value is this, it's because that new patient, it's an opportunity to impact people's lives. And that's ultimately the goal. We want to impact and change as many people's lives as possible. And if you miss that new patient call because you answered it like a moron, which in her defense, that was a weird call, right? You're not allowed to answer the phone until you gain that knowledge. So it creates team members and a culture of our team that they want the knowledge so that they can help people. So it really creates a, a, a mutually beneficial culture of um, both team and patients. And, and the other thing is we'll have, this, this drives me crazy, and this happens so frequently. I try to stay composed, but I'm not good at it. I don't have a great poker face, as you've probably realized, but I have a patient, a new patient will come in and we'll talk about, oh, you know, you're potentially grinding. Oh, well, I have a, I have a night guard. I, I wear an appliance. What does it look like? Um, well, here I brought it, right? They'll bring it and I look at it and there's holes in it because they're grinding through it. And so we go in through the explanation about, hey, that's treating, that's protecting your teeth, arguably, but we'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's protecting your teeth, but you're still applying those forces. So where are the forces going? They're going to the appliance, they're going into the muscles, into the jaw. So you're fine at the age of 25 with this single splint appliance that by the way, whether it fits on the top or the bottom, we show them the CBCT. Imagine if we put extra material there, what does that do? Drives the jaw backwards, draws, draws the, the tongue backwards. So now you're compensating even more. Well, I don't believe you. Okay, don't believe me. Take a home sleep test. Do one by yourself and one with it. Let's see which one's better. Never ever has a single splint um, night guard been better than the patient by themselves. It makes it worse every time. So when we start talking about um, a, a tap appliance and they're like, well, I don't know if I wanna wear something on the top or bottom. Yeah, no problem. I, I understand your hesitation. That's the only way this is gonna work. And here's why. We have to change the relationship of the upper and lower jaw to bring the tongue forward. The tongue's attached to the lower jaw. We've gotta bring it forward to open the airway. Don't worry, we're gonna use our technology to make sure that we don't, we bring it only as far forward as we need it. Um, but it's critical that we do that. Otherwise it's gonna be worse. And the frustrating part is they'll say, well, I don't want another appliance. I've had eight night guards. My other dentist made me eight night guards. I'm like, well, how much did those cost? And, and you know, the interesting is, thing is they'll say, the fee is anywhere from 1200 to $3,000. And I'm saying, and they last for one time a year? What if I make you a customized appliance that we can titrate over time and you'll pay for it once for the rest of your life, unless your dog eats it or you power wash it, right? Um, how does that sound? And by the way, it's a fourth of what you've already invested in these other appliances. Oh, okay, that does sound good. So it's nice to have an appliance like the TAP that has the integrity and the longevity that it'll last. Um, and patients like to hear, hey, I'm pretty much putting a, a guarantee on this that you're not gonna need a new one.